Can fitting a performance air filter get some cheap and easy power gains to your car? Now I fitted one of these to my Porsche 996 and when I actually had it dynoed a year and a half ago, it was slightly down on power of the factory's 296 horsepower. But has fitting this got it close to that figure, although I have done some other changes as well. What I want to know is just how many horses are in there and does this give you more than the standard factory air filter? So I'm here with Charlie, who owns Surrey Rolling Road. Now, Charlie, when I was last with you about a year and a half ago, you dynoed my car, and this is the graph. What is the problem with this graph? It's very wavy. The power curve on a 911 really shouldn't look like this. It should be much, much smoother. The actual power, we're not that far off. Over the space of 18 years or so, we'll drop a little bit, but realistically, if the car was entirely healthy, we should still see 290. This really bothered me, this part of the graph. And so I cleaned the injectors, because it could have something to do with it. I also stuck in an aftermarket performance panel filter. I've been running the car non-stop on Shell V-Power, which is supposedly going to help clean the engine. I didn't really notice any difference. Then I had something done to the exhaust, and we noticed that the left cat was dead. A big chunk of it was actually in the exhaust silencer. So I put some replacement caps on it. They're actually second-hand ones from another car of a similar age, yep. but they were all fine and MOT yep. certified. Put them on drove it and it felt different. So hopefully, hopefully it's going to be better. Charlie's just warming the car up now. My only concern is that these 996 engines do have a problem with the intermediate shaft bearing and it can just explode at any time and destroy the engine. And I pray that it doesn't do it while I'm trying to do a dyno run. So the number to be, 275 horsepower. Come on, car. Come on. Here we go. It's climbing. It's not waving this crap. Uh, 280 horsepower. Come on. better 282 horsepower that graph is still really wavy right and charlie let's talk about this graph so the red line is the old graph the blue one is the new one first the good news more horsepower yep seven horsepower up and six foot pounds up in the mid-range which is good yes. not quite 290 which is what i wanted and we've still got that Wait. wavy graph these engines always have a little bit of a wavy line at the top, so I'm not overly concerned. It's making near enough the power, what it should be. It pulls strongly and it seems happy. Okay, so I'm sort of happy. What I want to know now, though, is the effect of that panel filter. Imagine if it actually goes up in power. Do you ever see that? Yes. Really? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's find out. Okay, so I have some tools and I'm going to have to remove the filter myself. So, yeah. Ooh, ooh, come out. <sighs> Roasting hot. So many screws. Porsche makes things far too difficult. Having the engine in the wrong place doesn't help for a start. Ooh. So here's a standard filter. Here is the aftermarket high performance, apparently, filter. So I'll just swap them over and put it all back together. Oh, I hate doing this. Okay, Charlie, the results. <laughs> the results are you lost 0.7 of a horsepower. Purple line is the standard filter, orange line is the aftermarket filter. With the standard air filter, there is a noticeable increase in low down power and torque. Uh, there's an extra four foot pounds, all the way from when I put a foot down at two and a half thousand, up to five and a half thousand. So the standard filter, actually, if you look at it over the course of the run, the standard filter actually works better. 
So then my performance air filter didn't really add any performance to my car. Instead, it actually sort of reduced it. Still, there are some mods you can do to some cars which will give you significant gains. For instance, this is my cameraman Jack's car and he's done some mods to it. But have they been as pointless as the ones I've done to my Porsche? Let's get it on the dyno to find out. So Charlie, now we're going to try Jack's car. It's a 328i, stock they're around what, like 192? 192, 193. He's actually had a few performance mods on it, a high flow inlet manifold, and it's been remapped. This is an E36, it's pretty old and costs them 1,500 quid. Like I said, 500 quid to spend tuning it up. So two grand's worth of car. He reckons it's going to do about 220 horsepower. What do you think? You can see anything from 220, 215 at the lowest to 240 is the highest I've ever done. If he goes 240, that's so close to my Porsche and it's like a two grand car, I'm going to be well gutted. First run, and it's just done 216 horsepower. Oh yes, increase already. Looking good. Wow! Almost 227 horsepower for a 500 pound upgrade, going from 193 to 227. <laughs> Pretty well spent in my book. Right, and Charlie, so almost 227 horsepower Jack's yep. car's doing, which is good, isn't it? It's round about what you'd expect with these mods. Two things which jump out. The first is there's a huge flat spot between five and five and a half. It's missing probably 15 to 20 horsepower at that point, and then it dies very badly after 6,000. These normally pull up a little bit higher, and the reason for that is the fueling of the car is very rich at the top end, so it's not going to generate the power when it's that rich. So basically, the remap ain't great. The remaps, it's not the best one I've seen, no. If you were to get it custom remapped by a firm, then I think you'd probably see 230, um, but a much smoother power curve at the top end. Okay, but for 500 quid? They're a very tunable car, these, for not a lot of money, and you do get the power. So my performance mod, the performance air filter, waste of time. The one on this car, this E36 with the inlet manifold, well worth it. Absolutely. And I feel a little bit cheated some way that my car is like worth, well, I paid over £16,000 for it. It's not really got that much more power than Jack's one with, well, it cost him two grand all in. Oh dear. So then, what have I learned? Well, I've learned that there are some modifications you can make to a car which do work, which in the case of Jack's car, rather annoyingly for me, takes his car well over the manufacturer's figure for what it had when it came out of the factory. But the panel filter I fitted to my car, well, it didn't really work at all. In fact, it was slightly negative because while it did an extra horsepower at the top end of the rev range, throughout most of the rev range, it actually reduced the power. So was it worth spending 90 pounds on this? Well, actually, I think, yes, it was. That's because I've actually been driving this car now with the paper filter and I can't notice any difference in performance. It doesn't feel any more responsive throughout the rev range. And it doesn't sound as good with that paper filter. With this, it sounds really good, the car. So I'm going to be putting it back in. Don't think of this as a performance upgrade. Think of it as a sound upgrade. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also, click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our ad deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.